Now, the purpose of this session is to talk to you about what are stem cells. You've already had a session, I th it was with Mary, wasn't it? Yeah. So you've already looked at what are stem cells. So this is going to be about what are stem cells. Now, some of this you will have already done, I hope, but I'm going to teach you it in a slightly different way. I'm going to use fluffy toys. If I use the word hematopoietic, have any of you come across it? That makes my life easy. It's a, it's a scientific term referring to blood forming. So these are, this is a, a model, a very fluffy model, of a blood forming stem cell. So if you were to open up any of the large bones in your body, inside would be a spongy tissue, the bone marrow. And if they were to take bone marrow from you, they would tend to take it from your pelvis or from your upper thigh. And that's what's inside, these little cells. Now these are stem cells because they have the two important biological properties that stem cells have. First of all, they can self-renew. In other words, they can divide and become more of themselves. Yeah? So this hematopoietic, this blood-forming stem cell, can copy itself and keep reproducing and become more of itself. This is important. That's why your bone marrow is able to keep reproducing. Because it, if you remove some bone marrow from your body, it can still grow more. Yeah? Now, because it is a stem cell, it also has the second <coughs> function of a stem cell. The second function of a stem cell is to become a more specialized cell, to use the scientific terminology to differentiate, to take on a specific function. This specific stem cell is known as multipotent. What that means is it become, become multiple other types of cell. But it's not pluripotent, it can't become every cell in your body. It can only become a limited number of cells. Now, this particular one can become any one of the three blood cells. Or toys. So it can become a white blood cell. These are your body's defenders. They help attack infection, etc., in your bloodstream. Or it can become a platelet. If you cut yourself and you start to scab over, it's these platelets which are doing that. Or it can become a red blood cell. These are the cells that carry oxygen around your body. So this is a stem cell because it has those two functions. It can self-renew, become more of itself, and it can become more specialized cells. It can differentiate. In this case, it can only become three types of cell. So it's multipotent. It can become multiple types of cell, but it can't become all of the 200 or so types of cell in your body. Does all that make sense? Right, let's see how much that's, that's, that's registered. In your groups, I'm going to give you a little colored pa pack. And in each pack, what you'll find is a, a short part which has a few words on it and a, a longer definition. And what I want you to do in your group is to line up the definitions with, those, with the words that they define. Missing this one, sorry about that. Thank you. Steady on, are you sure it's that one
You shouldn't have any part left over, so that may suggest that you're missing a label. Oh, it's just blank, okay. If you could give that to me so I don't get confused. It's very easy to do, confuse me. Right, okay. So, how confident are you with the matching up? You're pretty confident, <laughs> not so confident, yeah? Okay, well this is a learning experience, so, so don't worry about get it, get, getting this wrong. But let's start with induced pluripotent stem cells. What's this group got lined up for that? We programmed adult cells where a harmless virus has been used to introduce genes that are normally switched on in pluripotent cells. Has everybody got that? Okay. So the pluripotent stem cells, we can get them in three ways. One way would be to extract them from embryos, which will destroy the embryo. Another way would be to create them using this technique, if, uh, which involves using a virus to introduce pluripotent genes into the cell. And there's a third way, which we'll come to in a, um, in a minute, S called step cells. What's this group got as the definition for step cells? Uh, body cells which are already differentiated and reprogrammed back to a pluripotent or tetrapotent state where exposure to a slightly acidic bath or other stress inducing conditions. Haruko Okobata claims to have made stap cells, but her research is controversial. Excellent. So, what she claims to have done is taken a, a fully differentiated cell, a normal cell, a non stem cell, and dipped it in a slightly acidic bath, and she, she claims that, that it would then became a pluripotent stem cell. Her research is very controversial. At the moment, her, her scientific papers haven't been retracted, but most of the authors, including her, have requested that they be retracted. For, 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 so it's unclear at the moment whether it's possible to reproduce her research. So there's two techniques for getting pluripotent stem cells that we're quite sure of, and this third possibility that's still controversial. So what does this third group have as their definition of multipotent stem cells? Excellent. So the example that I started with, with these fluffy toys, that's a multipotent stem cell. So what do you have as your definition of pluripotent stem cells? Um, cells with the potential to develop into any one of 200 or so human cell types. Super. And what do you have as your definition of totipotent stem cells? Uh, cells with the potential to develop into any cell type, including placental cells, Totipotent cells can be found in, found in the human embryo up until the eight cell stage of embryo development. Okay, so the difference between the pluripotent and the totipotent is the totipotent are pluripotent cells that can also become placental cells. So they have this additional function. The placenta is, becomes the afterbirth eventually. It's the bit around the embryo. So a totipotent cell can become a child in theory. A pluripotent cell is missing something to become a complete child. Okay? Now, so when we talk about embryonic stem cells, in the main, we're talking about pluripotent stem cells, not totipotent ones. One more thing, the definition of stem cells. Cells capable of self-renewal, making copies of themselves and differentiating the Superb. What I'm going to do now is hand you a sheet with those definitions on. If you could take one of these each, so that you have a little aid memoir, a little note to recall this when you've left the room. Okay, I think everyone's done it, yes? Okay, now there's one of these which is slightly tricky, and the rest I think are straightforward, but let's see whether you agree. For the motor um, neuron cell, what's this group got down for that? Yeah, we're all happy with that? That's a fully differentiated cell. It's not a stem cell. What about the bone marrow stem cell, this group? Okay, we all happy with that? The example that I started with with the toys. The red blood cell, this group. So on this sheet, there's two examples of cells, cells which are no longer stem cells. Yeah? So moving on, stap cells, this group. We had either talk-potent or pluripotent, depending on how far back we can take it. Okay, and... Okay. Actually, that's, that's very clever because the STAP, we've removed the full wording because the, the P stands for pluripotent. 
But in a second paper in which they published, uh, they, they, they claimed that the cells may even have totipotency. So the, the, they, were, they were claiming more in one paper than in the other. But technically the technique is only about pluripotency, but they suggested perhaps there might be totipotency as well. Both claims are highly controversial. And it doesn't look like it's going to be the case that it's going to be reproducible. A group of scientists have tried to reproduce it. And unusually in science, they don't normally publish negative papers showing that it's not possible to do something, but they have in this case. They published a paper where the scientists claim that it's not possible to do what they claimed in the original one. It's very controversial. Right, so, the question that I want to open up now is, why did we do this? Because we're going to be going through legislation, we're going to be arguing in political parties later over a fictitious bill called the Stem Cell Bill. So why is a lawyer, somebody like me, or, so, or a parliamentary draft person, or a member of parliament, why do they need to know anything about science? What do you think? If you're going to be passing legislation or something, you need to have a good working definition of what you're passing the legislation on. You can't just say, oh, we're banning stem cells when there's, it's a varied topic. Excellent, that's absolutely right. Let me give you a, another example so that this, we can put this into context. Imagine that you're in Parliament just as the first motor car has been invented. And you're very worried that this motor car is going to cause road traffic accidents, it's going to kill people on the road. So you want to regulate it. So what you decide to do is enact legislation that requires a driving licence to ensure that those who are driving the, the car have a degree of competency. Yep, sounds sensible, doesn't it? Okay. Would you need to know anything about the science of motor cars to do that? What do you think? Yes. You say no, you say yes. You, you say no. You, you wouldn't need to know the mechanics of how it works. You, you need to like, establish like, a level of competency, but I don't think that's got anything to do with how like, the motor car actually works. It's to do with like, how well people are able to drive it and how safely people are um, You say yes, My because... Of the, uh, of the uh, combustion engine doesn't stop me from being able to drive it. Mm -hmm. I'm saying someone has to have a full understanding of something, but in order to be able to define something, you have to understand how it works and how it differs from something else. If someone didn't understand how a motor vehicle worked at all, they'd be, okay, you need a driving license, then everyone would have to go get a driving license to ride a bicycle, because it, it moves around on wheels, it must That's be a motor vehicle. That's precisely right. That's the, absolutely right. That's the point that I was going to get to. Yeah, you, you preempted where I was going. Okay, so if you've defined a motor vehicle as a motorised car, and a lorry is then invented, your legislation is not going to apply to lorries. But do lorries pose the same type of risk as cars? Perhaps more, because they're even larger. And if, you, if you've defined your motor vehicle in terms of being powered by a petrol or a diesel engine, what happens um, when you're dealing with a motorcycle, where you say that falls within it, what if the motorcycle is powered by an electric engine? And if you've defined your vehicle as any vehicle enabling you to move from one point to another on a road, does that encompass push bikes, horses, horses and the like? Probably would. Yeah? So once you've defined or you've determined the type of harm you want to regulate, you then need to, be able to, need to understand something about the science to ensure that the definitions you employ in the Act cover, the act, cover those harms. Does that make sense? Yeah? So you, you two are absolutely right in the sense that you don't need to know the details of how an engine works. Yeah. That's not necessary in that particular example. Because, it, because what they're trying to regulate are specific dangers on the road that have no connection with whether the engine is an electric one, a diesel one, a petrol one, etc. But you are going to need to know what, what's, what, what's possible at the moment and what's likely to occur to ensure that the legislation is not out of date the day after you enact it. Yeah? What to do your best. And that's what's happening in this area. When it comes to the regulation of stem cells, Parliament's going to need to know what, what, what are the different types of technique and what dangers do they pose, what risks do they present, what potential benefits do they present. They're not going to have to have a detailed understanding, but as soon as they start laying down definitions, 
it's got to be clear to everybody what those definitions capture and what they don't.